So let's apply our life meter to Earth. So what, you know, if we were just to apply assembly index measurements to Earth, what, we, what, what kind of stuff are going to be get, uh, are going to get? What's impressive so, about some of the complexity on Earth? So we did this a few years ago in the, um, when I was trying to convince NASA and colleagues that this technique could work. And honestly, it's so funny because everyone's like, no, it ain't going to work. <laughs> and it was just like, because the chemists were saying, of course there are complicated molecules out there you can detect that just form randomly. And I was like, re re really? That's like, that was like, you know, it's a bit like a, um, I don't know, someone saying, of course Darwin textbook was just written randomly by some monkeys and a typewriter it was just for me it was like really and the, and and i pushed a lot on the chemists now and i think most of them are on board but not totally i re really had some big arguments but the copy number caught there because i think i confused the chemist by saying one off and then when i made clear about the copy number sure. i think that made it a little bit easier just to clarify yeah, chemists might say that of course out there outside of earth there's complex molecules Yes. Okay. And then you're saying, wait a minute. That's like saying, of course, there's aliens out there. Like you. Yeah. Exactly that. Okay. Exactly. But you're you're saying you clarify that that's actually a very interesting question, and we should be looking for complex molecules of which the copy number is two or greater. Yeah. Exactly. So on Earth, so coming back to Earth, what we did is we took a whole bunch of samples we and we were running prebiotic chemistry experiments in the lab. Um, we took various inorganic minerals and extracted them. Look at the volatile because m there's a special way of treating minerals and polymers in assembly theory. Where what, In this, in our life machine, we're looking at molecules. We don't care about polymers because they don't, they're not volatile, you can't hold them. They're not, how, how can you make, if you can't assert that they're identical, then it's very difficult for you to, to, to work out if they're undergone selection or they're just a random mess. Same with some minerals, but we can come back to that. So basically what you do, we got a whole load of samples, inorganic ones. Mm -hmm. We got a load of, we got Scotch whiskey and also got, nice. took Ardberg, which is one of my favorite whiskeys, which is very peaty. And another whisk what does PD mean? is like um, so the way that on uh, on um, in Scotland in Isla, which is a little island, the 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 Scotch the Scot the whisky is let to mature in barrels, and um, the the it's said that the peat you know the the the, the, the complex molecules in the peat mm -hmm. might find their way through into the whisky, and that's what gives it this intense brown color mm -hmm. and really complex flavor it's literally molecular complexity that does that mm -hmm. and so you know vodka is the complete opposite it's just pure right so with the better the whiskey the higher the assembly index or the, hi the higher the assembly index the better the whiskey that's what i mean i really Much. love deep pt scottish whiskies near my house there is a, a low, one of the the lowland distilleries called glengoyne it's still beautiful whiskey but not as complex so for fun, I cooked, took some Glencoyne uh, whiskey in our bag and put them into the mass spec and measure the assembly index. I also got E. coli. So the way we do it, take the E. coli, break the cell apart, take it all apart, um, and also got some beer. And and people were ridiculing us, saying, "Oh, beer is evidence of complexity." One of the one of the computational uh, complexity people was just throwing, yeah, we. Kind of, kind of, he's very vigorous in his disagreement of assembly theory. Was just saying, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Even beer is more complicated than human. What he didn't realize is that it's not beer per se. It is taking the yeast extract, taking the extract, breaking the cells, extracting the molecules, and just looking at the profile of the molecules, see if there's anything over the threshold. And we also put in a really complex molecule taxol. So we took all of these, but also NASA gave us, I think, five samples. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't tell us what they are. They said, no, we don't believe you're going to get this to work. Mm -hmm. And they really, you know, they gave us some super complex samples. And they gave us two fossils, one that was a million years old and one was at 10,000 years old, um, sea, something from Antarctica, seabed. They gave us a Murchison meteorite and a few others. Put them through the system. So I, we, we took all the samples, treated them all identically, put them into mass spec, fragmented them, counted, and in this case, implicit in the measurement was we um you in mass spec you only detect um 
peaks when you've got more than, say, let's say 10,000 identical molecules. So the copy number is already baked in, but wasn't quantified, which is super important there. This was in the first paper, because I was like, it's abundant, of course. Um, and when you then took it all out, we found that the biological samples um, gave you um, molecules that had an assembly index greater than 15, and all the abiotic samples were less than 15, and then we took the NASA samples, and we looked at the ones that were more than 15 less than 15, and we gave them back to NASA, and they're like, oh, gosh, yep, dead, living, dead, living. You got it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what we found on Earth. Um, that's a success. Yeah. Oh, yeah, resounding success. Um, well, can, can you uh, just go back to the beer and the E. coli? So yeah. what, what's the assembly index on those? So what you were able to do is like the assembly index um, of we found high assembly index molecules origi originating from the beer sample mm -hmm. and the E. coli sample. Because so the yeast and the beer. I mean, there, there, there were, I didn't know which one was higher. We, we didn't really do any detail there because now we are doing that because one of the things we've done um, – it's a secret, but I can tell you. <laughs> I think <it's> a... <laughs> no, nobody's listening. <laughs> well, is that we've just mapped the tree of life using assembly theory because mm -hmm. everyone said, "Oh, that you can't do anything in biology." And what we're able to do is, so you, I think there's three ways. Well, two ways of doing tree of life traffic. Uh, um, well, three ways actually. Yeah, what's the tree of life? So the tree of life is basically um, tracing back the history of life on earth for all the different species going back what who evolved from what and it all goes all the way back to the first kind of life forms and they branch off and like you have plant kingdom the animal kingdom the fungi kingdom you know and different and different branches all the way up um and the way this was classically done and i'm no evolutionary biologist the evolutionary biologists are very tell me every day <laughs> at least 10 times Yes. Uh, uh, I want to be one though. I kind of like biology. It's kind of cool. But yeah, it's very cool. Um, but basically, what uh, <laughs> what Darwin and Mendeleev and all these people do is just they draw pictures, right? And they they taxa. They just con they were able to draw pictures and and say and say, oh, these look like common classes. Yeah. Then <laughs> <laughs> they're artists, really. They're just you know. But they're, they're but they're they were able to find out a lot, right? And looking at vertebrates, invertebrates, yeah. Cambrian explosion, all this stuff, and then. Um, then came the genomic revolution and suddenly everyone used gene sequencing and Craig Venter is a good example. I think he's gone around the world in his yacht just taking up samples, looking for new species where he's just found new species of life just from sequencing. It's amazing. So you have taxonomy, you have sequencing, and then you can also do a little bit of kind of molecular um, uh, kind of archaeology, like, you know, measure the samples and, and kind of form some inference. What we did um, is we were able to fingerprint. So we took a load of random samples from all of biology, and we used mass spectrometry. And what we did now is not just look for individual molecules, but we looked for coexisting molecules where they had to look at their joint assembly space and where we, we were able to cut them apart and, rec and undergo recursion in the mass spec and infer some relationships. And we were able to recapitulate the tree of life using mass spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. no sequencing and no drawing. Mm 